Operation Blackbird. Harvard Sortie. Reading. Do you know anyone who likes to boast all the time? Read what befell the boastful Nawab Rangel when he tried to capture the dreaded bandit Kutnath. He was indeed the great Nawab Jumbahajur Rangel, even though he had never stepped on a battlefield, nor displayed any valor. His kingdom of Nagodpur was merged with India at the time of the partition in 1947. With time, not only did the princely lifestyle fade away, but the world around the Nawab turned topsy-turvy. Today, the great Nawab Rangel lives in a modest house with his wife, Begum Rangelai, and does odd jobs like selling eggs and catching crooks. One day, he was sitting under a tree narrating the story of his tiger hunt to a group of children. With a sword in my hand, I chased the man-eater like a bullet. Sometimes, I was ahead of him, sometimes he was ahead of me. Then what happened, Nawab Sahib, a child, asked excitedly, How dare the tiger defeat me? I ran so fast that after an hour, when I turned my head, the beast was nowhere to be seen. As the children broke out laughing, Nawab Rangel's friend Shia Singh appeared. Seeing his long face, Nawab Rangel asked, What's wrong, Shaira? Last night my house was burgled. Putnath, the bandit, has robbed my house clean and vanished. Why did you not wake me up? How could I? It was only when I woke up in the morning that I realized the loss. Shia Singh cried. In fact, the bandit has plundered three more houses in the village. What else can you expect from a village where a flock of cowards live? True. But we do have a brave heart amongst us. Indeed, that's me. And that's why. Shia Singh continued, Puka Singh, the Mukhiya has chosen you to go into the forest and catch Putnath Nawab Rangel was shocked, for at the mention of the bandit's name, not only the village folks, but even the leaves trembled with fear. Somehow, he managed to put up a bold front and say, who else could dare to enter that ghastly forest? I'll march into it tonight and bring him dragging to the village square before dawn. That's the spirit. I did not. I mean, that is exactly what I expected from you. The Mukhiya has announced a fabulous prize of 10,000 rupees to anyone who brings that crook to justice, dead or alive. Nawab Rangel closed his eyes and saw the cloud bursting with crisp green, bank notes. Notes in the sky, notes in the air, notes everywhere. When he reached home, his heart sank. He thought of the bandit Putnath big bulging eyes, frightening moustache, thick black beard and a wrestler's body. The truth was, alas, that no one had ever seen Putnath in person. Begum Rangelai was worried to see her husband look so dismal and asked what was wrong. Bandit Putnath, said Nawab Sahib. Begum Rangelai correctly guessed, he must have accepted the challenge to capture Putnath and now was cursing himself for his blunder. Ah, she said, so my valiant soldier is all set to launch Operation Blackbird. Nawab Rangel was hurt. That bandit has done no harm to us, has he? Probably, he has realized this house is invincible. That is why he has never dared to touch us. But will you go into the forest or? Still plenty of time till sunset. After sunset, it was time to leave for the jungle, and poor Nawab Rangel was scared. 
He decided to hide under the bed, and told his wife his plan, if Shera comes to fetch me, tell him I have already left for the battlefield, fully armed. But Shia Singh had already arrived and was listening quietly from the door. Nawab Sahib, the battlefield for brave hearts is not under the bed. So saying, he led the Nawab out to meet the villagers who walked with them to the forest. Despite his pounding heart, Nawab Rangel walked into the forest. He scampered up a tree to protect himself. The bandit Pugnath had also chosen the same tree to get some sleep. Pugnath woke up with a start and asked, who's there? Man or mass? Feeling insulted, the Nawab replied, I am the original brave heart, Nawab Jambaharjo Rangel of Nagorpur. I have sworn to catch Pugnath and take him to the village to hang him. Who are you? I am Lalau, the sweet seller. I have also come in search of Pugnath. Now, what is the use of spending the night here? It's better that I leave. The Nawab was terrified at the thought of the man leaving. He said, if I succeed in this venture, I will give the prize money to you. To be honest, all the gold of my Begum is still safe in the house. Hearing the Nawab, a plan formed in the crafty bandit's mind. Pudnath decided to steal the Begum's jewelry. He said, I don't think Pudnath will dare come here tonight because the brave heart is personally here. Let's go home and sleep in peace. Relieved, the Nawab invited Lalau home for dinner, took him home and introduced him to his Begum, this poor guy has not eaten anything for the last couple of days. Quick, make Halwa Kuri as fast as you can the Begum asked, you did not say anything about the bandit. What is there to say? There was a ringing tone of success in his voice. When he found out that I was looking for him, he simply vanished. But Begum Rangelai was not that easy to fool. She had become alert the moment she had a glimpse of the guest. There is something dubious about the chap. The Nawab says he's a sweet seller. But who has ever seen a sweet seller with a hard, threatening face? Begum Rangelai quickly realized who the guest was. But what could she do? She thought and thought. Then she spotted the Nawab's old sleeping pills. She mixed them in the halwa, meant for the bandit, and carried two plates to the seated men. Laluyi, the halwa puri dish, prepared by the master chef, Bacon Rangelai of Lucknow, is internationally known for its flavor and taste. Nawab Bahajor had jumped up and served the man the unadulterated dish before she could wink at him. The Begum felt like banging her head on the wall. To make matters worse, the Nawab insisted on feeding his wife. Her protests fell on deaf ears, and she was forced to eat from the same dish as her husbands. You are a sweet seller. Have you ever cooked such a delicious dish? The Nawab asked Pugnath. Not even my father prepared anything like this. The Nawab stretched his legs on a sharp eye. He could not even finish his sentence and was soon fast asleep. In the kitchen, the Begum too was feeling dizzy. She was cursing herself for her ingenious idea. Soon. She too was sleeping like a log. Pugnath was quietly watching the scene. A miracle, he thought. Soon, he was at work. Quickly, he opened the safe, grabbed the jewelry box, and walked out through the front door like a gentleman. <laughs>